in the 2018 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Kimoko Ture. Welcome back. This is the Plugged In Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Making, aka D Making Moves. And I have a very, very distinguished guest in the studio with us this evening, man. This guy is um he's a celebrity. Like plain and simple, he's a celebrity, uh, professional football player for the Indianapolis Colts, Mr. Kimoko Ture. Thank you, Dave. Thank How you, you feeling, brother? I feel good, bro. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Um, thank you for lending for inviting me. It was a great day. Man, how you um how you holding up with everything that's going on with uh, COVID and and really like you know that affecting your day to day life because professional sports has been stopped. So how you like managing through the COVID? Um, I'm just I'm staying on top of my uh, my rehabs. Um, nothing changed. Um, I was training in um, Miami for a month. Okay. Before all this uh, epidemic started, I was there. I was trying to you know get you know different opinions and and my therapy. Um, but fortunately, I had to came back because of COVID. They had to kick, they kick everybody out the hotels and stuff. But I mean, I talked to the uh, my coaches and whatever, trying to stay on top of my. Uh, rehab because uh, you know they closed down the facility at the time, so I was training at St. Vincent. Okay. To get my rehab in, um, but I mean, hey, I'm 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 just ready to go. I mean, I'm constantly just working on my body every day, um, eating right, and um, but at this moment I'm going through Ramadan. I'm Muslim, um, so I'm going through Ramadan. So I'm just grinding. I can't eat from sunrise to sundown. Right. Yeah. So I'm just like. Right. It's like two tough things, just going through rehab and just going through, um, you know, Ramadan with my religion, whatever. But it's just making me mentally strong and and just, you know, getting me ready for the season. Out of curiosity, because I I just never even really took the time to think about when something like Ramadan um, affects the um, nutrition or the fitness plan or how that fits in with a professional athlete. Um, is that hard to manage, like just on a regular basis, even if you weren't mm-hmm. injured and, th- and different things like that? Um, yeah, for some people, they, they would think that it's hard to manage, but I've been doing it since I was young. Um, oh, okay. I've, yeah, since college, I've been I've been training without drinking and without eating, so it, it, it became second nature to me. Um, with this uh, with this situation I'm going through with the uh, injury and stuff like that, it's just you, it like you know like how coaches always say. You have to schedule and prioritize your your daily routine. Mm-hmm. So this is like my daily routine. This is my religion. So I, every day, like I know I have to gain weight, and for me doing that, I know I'm supposed to eat on sun um, sundown before sunrise. So I constantly just the just change the day around. How if I eat three times a day during um, three times, I would just eat three times uh, at night, mm-hmm. and just you know eat um, the time I'm supposed to eat. I'm supposed to eat around eight fifty five, and I eat eight fifty five, and then and after I eat eight fifty five, I'm relaxed. I'm drinking water and drinking muscle milk, and then I'm eating it around eleven, and I'm going to sleep. And I get up at like three or four o'clock in the morning, constantly eating, and just staying the same routine, but. Doing that night. Man, that take mad, <laughs> mad discipline. Yeah, mad does. discipline. Yeah. But um, you wouldn't be where you at today, you know what I mean, if you hadn't um, been a real student of discipline or got to, like, a mastery level with that. And one of the biggest things I want to expose everybody to today is, like, your story, your background, and how you got here. Because I think that um, a lot of times uh, we usually just kind of take in just – the fame and everything that's going on when you make it to the league yeah, but the story a lot of times is not the headlines and different things that make that be made when you're in the league but what you actually had to do to get there mm-hmm. and you got a very interesting story you right. know what i mean so um if we could just kind of take a couple steps back and go back like to childhood lil kimoko child childhood yeah child childhood <laughs> where did you grow up and how was your upbringing um, you know, I was born in Guinea. I was born in Guinea. My dad's from Liberia. My mom's from Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. Um, I came here at the age of six. Um, and growing up here, you know, like I, you know, 
going up here, I had to learn English and I had to learn, I had, I had to adjust to a new culture mm-hmm. and and just being, and, and had to learn how to adapt. So by me adapting, you know, and going to my height and everything, I, had to, um, I started playing, I started doing karate. I was a, I, I, my first sports was soccer and I did karate. Um, and after that, then I started being, I get, I was, you know, I get I, my height, I kept getting big. I was big for my, uh, I was big in everybody in my school and everything. So I started playing basketball, but I didn't take basketball seriously because all I knew was like, I just wanted to hang around with my friends and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I mean, I just did basketball because everybody was telling me play basketball because you're tall. Um, the, so I played basketball from my, since I was a child. So I played basketball, then I started doing boxing. A lot of people know I did boxing as well. So I did boxing for a few minutes. My mom stopped me from doing boxing. I was really good at boxing. And um, then I thought I stopped boxing, I went back to basketball. And then I didn't really take basketball really seriously because I didn't, I didn't really know. But, but you know, 2008, I went through, uh, you know, you know the 2008 was a recession. Right. So 2008, 2009. So um, I didn't, you know, I didn't really take basketball seriously. And that's when I really just started to feel the struggle. Like, my mom had to find mm-hmm. ants meat. My dad, my dad was, his, he was going out of business. And it just woke me up. And I knew how, and I, I'm, and I was, I always grew up around my dad and my mom and how hard working they was. My mom was a hair braider. So I used to stay with my mom from eight o'clock to three o'clock in the morning when she used to braid hair. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I already knew the definition of hard work and how, and stuff like that. So I already seen how hard work, sh- uh, I already see how hard work looked like. So, and, um, you know, so long story short, you know, just, you know, just after I played basketball, then my sophomore year, you know, um, my sophomore year, my, um, well, that, that's when I moved to Newark, so we had to move out because you know we had no electricity bill, and I was the oldest. Of, I was the oldest of six, so we had okay. no electricity bill, no water bill, and everything. So I, I couldn't feed. I couldn't help my mom out. So what I had to do, my mom was my mom put me to the side like, Mom, I want to help you work. My mom was like, Nah, I want you to stay focused in school and your sports. That's all I want. And she's like, I don't want you to be. I don't want you to have. I don't want you to do three different things at one because if you want if you want your dream, if you want to succeed at something. He got put all. He got put hundred percent of it. Mm. So, and then and going through that recession it opened my eyes and and my religion too. Like it just taught me how to be humble and just constantly keep working hard because God automatically gonna pay. Um, you know, fulfill your dream if you if you believe in what you want to succeed in life. So I never gave up in what I want to. I constantly keep playing basketball. Basketball was my first sport. Constantly keep playing, practicing every day. I used to get up six o'clock in the morning, and people didn't know my hard work. And constantly, I, I show videos of what I used to do. People think that's brand new. It started from day one. I used to get up six o'clock in the morning before I used to, like practice, dribble around the streets all the time. That would have, I used to, and I, I had to get take a shower and get ready and go to class. Right. If we go to school, so I go to school and I have basketball practice. And like eight o'clock in the morning before class start at eight forty five. And I used to go for eight forty five and I had practice after school. And I used to stay longer, play stay at the basketball practice. My coach used to drop me home. Man, I used to do the same thing over and over and over and over. Over and over. So it becomes second nature. And you know, sophomore year, you know, my uh, track coach was like, Yo, you athletic, you should play basketball and he got me to play basketball. And I mean, uh, he, should, he said you should play, you run track. So I ran track, I did long discus, triple jump, long jump, high jump, 100 meters, and I was good at it. I love it. I was good at all of them. And I used to get, I used to win. I, I didn't know how track, I, mean, I, didn't, know, I didn't know how track worked, but I love, I started, I started to become, I, I, I became to fall in love with track because it, it helped me with basketball. And it became, it made me an all around athlete. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, just doing that. And, I, and it just kept me off the streets. You know, man, growing up, what I grew up, I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. There was a lot of bad influence, and I used to hang with the wrong crowds. But it's just like, hey, basketball, sports kept me out of trouble, and it just kept me motivated, kept me yourself driven because I, I didn't want to constantly be at the position I was in, and I didn't want my family to be in the position that they was in. So, and it just kept pushing me every day. And when I ran track, and then led to football. So. At what age did you start to shoulder or feel, you know, I'm saying the burden of responsibility to try to provide for your family? Or when did you go to your mom and let her know, hey, mom, I want to help you pay the bills. I want to help you, you know, support the household. I was 12 turning 13. 12 turning 13. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think that that's definitely something that um, not everybody, but a lot of us can uh, relate to, especially as uh, black men just trying to be, uh, you know, from a young age, if we can or do have the opportunity to help out our mom, just, you know, taking on that responsibility. But you had a special type of mother that was very, very um, focused on not only providing for the family, but that you were successful in your own individual pursuits. So first of all, you know, happy happy Mother's Day to your mom oh, too, yeah, man, yeah. because uh, that. that type of uh, support and drive, you know, everybody don't get that when mm -hmm. they're growing up. And um, I think that that was a critical piece on top of just your discipline and your tunnel vision kind of take you into football. So when did you start getting into football and making that transition? I started getting into football um, because um, it led to me doing track. So I did track when I did track. Um, my sophomore year, my junior year, at the end of my junior year, my, um, my disc coach, my disc coach pulled me to the side in the bus. He's like, yo, you should play football. And we were sitting down constantly. Kept, he just kept badging me constantly, badging, badging me. I said, I don't want to play football. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to go. My dream, my dream is the NBA. He said, listen, he said, you ain't getting no scholarship for basketball yet. Like, you're going through your senior year. And that's my junior year of high school. And I was like, I, I know. I'm like, yo, so why, why am I going to quit? I ain't going to quit on my dream. If I put, if I put my mind on something, I'm going to go out there and get it. So he pulled me to the side. He said, all right, let's make a bet. He said, all right, we keep, we, I'm not going to keep going back and forth with you because he's like, I know you're an athlete, you're, and you're a very great athlete, and I, you don't believe in yourself yet. And he's like, yo, I'm going to take you to three different camps. If you don't get a scholarship in three, one, uh, three camps I take you in, I'll pay your tuition in college. And I said, I was, my mouth dropped. I said, pay my tuition in college. Right. <laughs> so I was like, I bet. So it was, it was a win-win for me. So. Mm. So we made, uh, so I shook his hand, um, but deep down inside, I was I was nervous. Um, I, I I didn't feel confident enough to um, to commit to it um, because the first um, the first uh, university was supposed to go to was Syracuse, and you know I got a little scared, you know, made a little excuse, and I called him up. He called me. He's like, "Yo, where you at?" He said, "I'm about to come pick you up." I said, "Nah, I got babysit." I said, "I got babysit my family, my my little baby sister." And he's like, oh, okay. He's all right. So yeah, he let it slide. So this, um, a week, I think a week later, he was supposed to go to Temple University. Then I was trying to make another excuse. I was like, I don't want to do it because my passion wasn't football. My passion was basketball. So he called. He now this time he drove by my house. His name Coach Nimi. He drove by my house and waited with. You got like he had like five guys with him in his car. Waited by my house. Him and Coach Nimi, Coach Nimi, and Coach Smoke sat by my house. Called me to see what I was gonna say. It was testing me. Where you at? I said I'm home. I was like, I'm babysitting right now. He said I ain't trying to hear no excuse. He said either you riding with us because you told me that you you told me right in my face you gonna you, you was gonna use with it. So I was like I, I don't got no cleats. He said I got cleats for you. No matter. What. He said let's go. He said don't disappoint your teammates because everybody we we depending on you right now. So he took me to um so I, you know I I couldn't make an excuse. So I, you know I rolled down, came downstairs. We went to Temple. He said, what position you want to play, receiver or DN? And I said, I want to play DN. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do receiver. I want to play DN. He said, all right, bet. So let's, let's go. And the thing I liked about him was he motivated me throughout the whole camp. Like, like he knew me already. Like, we like 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 we was, like, this tight. Like, like he he was like my support system. Like, I didn't believe in myself. Like, he showed me. Like, he showed me. He was like a father figure as well, like. Like he was like a second dad. Like he was like, "Yo, I know you could do it. Just show these cats who you are. I know who you are. It just you gotta show the world." And then mm -hmm. one on ones, every drill. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I didn't know football. I didn't know the. the I, I had no football IQ. I didn't know the technical uh, scheme or everything. I just was observing. I was just watching everybody, just be in the back of the line and try to do it, the, the drills better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so how did those uh, those camps work out? So you hit, you did end up going to Temple. Did you end up going to any of? Them? Oh yeah, the last one was Rutgers. Um, Temple okay. didn't want to offer me because I weighed 185 as a DN, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, we don't want to offer this kid um, because he's he's too small and he's an he's an anonymous um, kid that never played football, don't have a film out there. So 
and they want to take a chance on me. So they was like, I ran a 4-4 there. I ran a 4-4, and I was, I was better than every athlete that was there. And there's one kid that was looking at, Sebastian Joseph, was like one of my close friends. I went to Rutgers with him. He, um, unfortunately, he went to Rutgers with me. So they were offered, they was looking at him at the time. So they didn't want to offer nobody else but him. And they didn't know me. So it was like, this kid, we don't have any film on him, but we like, we don't want to take a chance. So after the end of the season, if he does good, we're going to offer him a scholarship. My coach was like, yo. And he showed, you know, by me watching, observing him, like how much faith he had in me. He's like, yo, you're making a big mistake. This kid is going to be top player. He's going to go to the NFL. This kid is going to be this. This kid is going to be that. And he was saying things that I never seen. I was like, yo, why is he hyping me up like this? Like, right. So, and it was like, oh, we don't want to take that chance. So, I went to Rutgers. And now, now just because I knew he believed in me, I went out there and ball. Like, I went to Rutgers, did the same thing there, had confidence. Me and him was like tight. And he like, me and him had a little handshake. And he just like, and that's the thing, like, that's the thing about him. Like, he, he showed me something that I didn't see in myself. So I balled out of Rutgers, and Rutgers uh, coach, head coach, saw me, pulled me to the side, like, "Yo, I like how you, I like how you play, and I like your um, your um, enthusiasm." Um, he's like, "I want to offer you a full scholarship." Mm. He offered me a full scholarship one day. And one day camp, he offered me a full scholarship with 600 kids there, and I was that one percent. Man, that's a that's a crazy story right yeah. there. But um, I also wanted to ask. Was it at Rutgers during that camp, or was it when you heard the way that your coach was talking about you? When did you know that um, not only am I a standout or breakout athlete, but I think that I have the ability to do something special with the game of football? Did that happen for you, like at one of them camps or at Rutgers or something like that? Or um, nah. The thing about me, I was always, I was always self-driven. Anything I like I mind you, I told you I did I already did karate, I did boxing, I did soccer. So I was a I was any sports you put you could put in my way. If I put it if I put my mind to it and said I'ma do it, because I'm self driven. I don't like to be I don't like to half ass anything I do. So if I tell them like before I didn't I didn't believe in myself at first, but it's like if I commit to it, I might as well put everything I got in it, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like I'm not gonna put fifty percent in something that like um that a person put me in and it's like I'm wasting my time and I'm wasting your time, you know? So it's like, I could be at home, it's like, all right, why, I don't know what this coach did, like this and that and that. He pointed out certain things, but I knew I pulled 50%. So I don't, I can't really evaluate the full, you know, right, the right. full thing that, uh, you know, the full situation or whatever. So I was like, you know, I mean, everything I do, I'm like, yo, I'm gonna do at 100%. And that was my, and he's seen that all the time. He's seen mm-hmm. that, I've never seen it, but he's just like, that's, was part of me all the time because I, I don't like I don't like losing. I'm always com- I'm a competitor. Nah, that's that's real wisdom. That's real wisdom right there, and uh, kind of having that mindset at the high school level, going into college. Um, how was your experience once you finally got to Rutgers? So now you turned that corner. You know what I mean. You committed yourself wholly to football, but in such a short amount of time you went from ah man i don't even this ain't even my first love or my second you know i hoop but getting on changing over to football and then bam you at Rutgers, d1 you know football is not a game out here right you know what i mean how was that how was that transaction i mean talk oh we're really start from the beginning like pull talk to me about pulling up on campus and just kind of process like what you're about to embark on like when I was offered that scholarship, bro, like it was mind blowing. I mean, I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to think of it because, like, I didn't. I thought it was just a regular thing, like mm. for you, like for you to get a scholarship and stuff like that. I when I went back to school the next day, everybody heard and it, it was all over the newspaper. Um, everybody was like, "Yo, you just got a scholarship one day." Like that's like, some kids like, "Yo, I've been I've been playing football since I was six years old." And I haven't gotten a scholarship. And it's like, yo, and I'm looking at you, bro. He's like, you got a some, you got a scholarship within being there for three hours. And I said, what you mean? I was like, I mean, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, mm-hmm. I didn't know. Like, I was clueless about it. So right. the situation. So I'm like, yo, they're like, bro, that's big. He like, yo, huge. This is something that, but this is something big in you, bro. He's like, yo, you got a full scholarship, which is worth something. Every kid around the world, like, plays 
when they was age of three, four, or five, and you got it at the age of fi like fifteen, and and um, but but, and it, it didn't hit me till when I got to Rutgers. Like when I went to Rutgers, um, I seen everybody that you know top players that were kids. You know, I'm just looking at everybody. But I mean that that's that I'm that mind you that mentality still never left in me. So mm -hmm. I mean, um, mind you. When I went to college, I also found out me and my coach, my basketball coach, had a conversation. He said I had a couple of schools looking at me for basketball and stuff. I did have like offers from basketball too as well, but he was like, "Y'all yeah, won, y'all won state or something like that when y'all." Yeah, was, I won state my basketball my senior year. Okay, um, okay. I won state and I was a leader at the, that that year too, so we won state. Um, and I went to Rutgers. I redshirted that year because I was like 195, still small. And they wanted me to learn the game because I didn't know the, I didn't know anything about football. Because I remember my, when I first started playing football, the only thing I knew was my coach would tell me like, "Yo, get whoever got the ball." Okay. Like, yes, adult, yeah. Get whoever got the ball, and, and anybody I see got the ball, I'm promised. And in that year, my because that year that my my uh, my high school year, I had 19 sacks, 105 tack, 100, 105 tackle, 28 tackle for loss, without knowing football, not right. knowing what the hell I was doing. And I led, and I was number two in the state with the most. I was number no number one in the state with the most sacks. Crazy. Yeah. And I went to Rutgers, red shirt, and um, not knowing anything. Still didn't know anything. Mm -hmm. They had a personal guy uh, intern pull me to the side every day after practice, teaching me the game, try to teach me basic of down and distance and and the schemes of offense and what's this, what's that, and I was still learning. I didn't know. But mind you, they had changed my position though, because I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the, um, because when I went there as a DN, they changed me as a linebacker. Okay. They put me in linebacker. And it was hard, and I had to read linebackers. The linebackers is gonna go flat and whatever. So I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble. So I'm like, y'all picked me up for defensive end, but, and I'm not doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and I don't have a football IQ. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But after a while, we had during the scrimmage, mm. I was messing up like linebacker. I didn't know what that was. I was looking clueless. So um, a coach, a coach pulled me to the side. He said, "Yo, we dropped you as a, D uh, we, we picked you up as a DN, right?" He said, "All right, try DN. Pull me in three plays. I had three sacks. Back Out to the back, gate. To back, off the gate. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was like, whoa, we're right, we gonna, we're gonna, this kid, this kid needs <laughs> to be a pass rusher. So, and that's how it all started. But I redshirted that year, and they was like, yo, you gonna be a DN for us for Rutgers. And that red shirt, they took that time. They, they was patient with me." and got me better and just kept training me in practice and whatever. And then I was ready. Mm. Put me on the field, I was ready. So when they put me on the field, I won I was all American. Um I was number I have I was number I was number two in a uh, nation with field goal block. Mm -hmm. I had the most block and um and I was they was like, yo, this kid could be a this kid have something there. So they seen something so and then when I once I started playing and then mind you when I started playing I only played third down and I had, I was that's all it. American just that's it and then I led the team that's with sacks and I was I was all American and number two in the nation field goal block that's crazy playing, only playing. yeah playing like such limited possessions only on the third down so man what would you say in that in that Rutgers experience what was the hardest uh, transition that you had to make was it like trying to pick up on all of that football IQ that you were not able to like build up over the years or was it um you know the physical or the workout regimen I know you was very disciplined on that but it, I know that it also bumps up a level when you get to the college so oh, yeah. was it the physical was it the mental was it the social like it's a lot of different elements going on it was it was I'll say it was time management okay because in high school you you're you go to school and after you're done with school, then you go straight to practice. But with this, you got your college work, you got exams, you got you got you got projects and all that. Then you gotta, they got tutoring, then then you got practice. Then it's just it was just every, it was, everything was all over the place. So it's like, and I had to go to campus to campus to campus and try to my time management was off. So it was it was something I had to learn how to get used to, and. Um, and then try to stay focused and, and then mind you, school was, it was stressful. When school was stressful, you go to practice, you start overthinking things like, oh damn, I gotta do school work and then now you start messing up and whatever. And especially you don't know football, so things start to get harder. You mm -hmm. know, things like that. And it's just like, 
understanding football, like the, the business aspect of football. I didn't know that. I had to ask my teammates, yo, what's this, what's that? Then that's when, when you start getting aches and nagging pain and whatever, and it's just like, yo, then you start thinking a lot, yo, what's going on with me? Like, Is this what I'm really trying to do, yeah. you know? So it was just, yeah, that's what that's what was one of my hardest things, just trying to adjust and trying to understand and learn, and trying to learn. I had to learn everything. Like once the game started being easy, once I learned the game, the game started to be easier for me. But when I didn't know anything, I was just doing anything. And it was like, dude, boom, just, mm. and one time I got hit in the chest, I was like, <gasps> nah, it was like, welcome to college. <laughs> right, <laughs> woke so you up. Woke you up, you like, damn. So was there um, a time going through all that and even just kind of starting to get ready and make that declaration for the draft and make that transition? Um, once you had already flipped the switch and said I was 100% committed to football, um, I know the discipline and the tunnel vision that you have kept you on path. But was there any time in that journey where you was like, you know what? Maybe this is not the move. Oh, yeah, I thought about that. Um, yeah, I could, it was 20, 2015, 2016 when I thought like football wasn't for me, where I just, I had, through, since I've been in college and a kid that never, that never knew the basic of football, I had five different defensive line coach being at Rutgers. Mm. Coaches coming in and out, and I don't know football yet, so I'm learning from different. And mind you, different coaches have different coaches, different style. philosophy. Yeah. So it's like, and I was getting confused because it's at the point like I have, I had a good year, but when I my redshirt freshman year, then after that my coach left and got a, a better job, and another coach came, and I had to learn all over. So, so it's like mm. it's all over, and a different uh, analogy and how he exp- how he explained things is so different. So after he left, and then I had another coach. It's like. And then co- all the coaches got fired, and then another coach came. And says like it was, it was hard for me to adjust to like the learning style of football and understanding the basic on how they want things, the job done, and which has created like my nagging injury, how injury started and whatever. Okay. So now I wasn't playing the same no more. So I didn't let anybody figure out what happened to this kid that had an All American year that played limited and that was so athletic that did so good. So what happened to him now? So I didn't know. So there's this kid that was trying to figure himself out and trying to figure football and trying to understand football. So I was always stressed out. And I was always playing. I was always stressed out, trying to figure out, nagging injuries, like trying to figure things out. And I didn't understand what it was. So I was just, you know, trying to ask questions like, yo, what should I do? And I felt under the radar from a kid who was going to be first round draft pick to like a kid that, <laughs> where he at? Mm. On drafting, you know? Okay. So, then that's when the surgery came in. I had two shoulder surgeries. Um, then that's when I was like, I called my mom. I was like, I don't know if I want to play football no more. I don't know. So now everything, I forgot everything. And I forgot where I came from, the struggle. Came from the, like, the trenches. I came from the trenches. Like, that's what like that's what brought me to, like, that's what made me hungry. So after I started feeling, I started feeling sorry for myself, you know? So mm-hmm. now, after now, now I started learning more about football. Like, no, in life, no one cares. You feel me? In life, no one cares. And, we, and it's like, you got to take the initiative. Like, yo, what am I going to do after, you know? Right. So I didn't have no one that cared. After I got hurt, I didn't have no one that cared. So it's like, only me. So I didn't, I didn't, not now, from a kid that was, that did good as soon as he came to college, you know, all the fans hitting him up, and then all of a sudden, not, no, no attention. So you just realize who's your real friend, who's, who's like, who's your support system. It's just always in my coach, my high school coach, always stuck by me, my mom and my dad always advising me and whatever. So I was like, yo, hey, maybe God put you down in this hole for a reason, you know? Mm. And it's like, what you gonna do about it? Now that's God's testing me how bad I want it, how bad I want to be successful. So that's how I thought about it, though. If I want, if this, my dream didn't come the way, easy the way I wanted it to be, and sometimes in life, like things is not gonna always be the way you expect it to be. You know, mm-hmm. and that's what hit me, and that's what hit me. And that's life. Life hit me, so right. I had to, again, like life hit me again. Like yo, don't be, don't be complacent. So now I had to work. I had two shoulder surgery. I had to work every day. I had to work in the um, the gym with the team, and after that, I had to, I had, to I had to go to my own. I went to my own a personal gym and I had my own like a uh, trainer, a physical therapy guy that met me that was helping me out with my treatment and everything. I was doing everything behind closed door. Things that I'm doing now that I post on Instagram, I was always doing that. And I've constantly kept doing it, kept doing it. Brought me back into my senior year. And then I fell off the radar trying to bring myself back. 
right 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 and then you but you didn't fall all the way off the radar you know what i mean like people were still though that's what i'm saying hard work that's what i'm trying to tell people like when people people get feel sorry for themselves like people understand like and that's what like a lot lot of people don't see their this the dream your dream is right here so if you see your dream if you go through obstacles you're gonna go through storms and everything everything's gonna hit you in life so it's 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 a matter of how bad you want this dream Mm -hmm. you got i just kept walking through them storms and that's what I did, cause I was for, after my senior year, I was projected seventh round and undrafted free agent. Mm. And after I came out, most most people didn't want they didn't want to draft me. Just like yo, we don't know what's wrong with this kid. But what I had to do is I had to show everybody that I was still that player. And I was, luckily I was invited to the Senior Bowl and the Combine. Right. And, and and all these top players that was ahead of me and whatever and all that type of stuff, I didn't care about none of that. Because I was still feeling, I had nagging injury because I had, my senior year, I had, I had two shoulder surgery. Then I had a broken rib. I was playing through broken ribs. Man, right? That's I was playing through broken, yeah. broken ribs, and then I had two tendonitis in my, in my knee. And then, I, and, and then um, by me, I, and then after that, I'm, I'm trying to recover. I had to do all that by myself. Get up or early in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. I used to call my mom. I don't know if I want to play football. Because my mom was always there, she was my support system, always constantly being that message in my ear and, and always telling me where we came from and the heart and the struggle that we've been through. And that's that's what kept driving me because I knew that my last name, Ture, it was in like, because once you go through struggle, you start thinking about yourself. You forget about everybody around you. So I had to realize, I had to, I had to clock in and like, yo, it's not only me. My mom is depending on me. My little brothers and everybody's depending on me. I got to pave the way for them. Make life easier for me. Mm. You know what I mean? My last name, Teray, is a big name. Because whatever I do now is going to is gonna determine what the future relies on my family. So I constantly, every day, I, I, I just became selfless. Not self, instead of selfish, so constantly working on myself. Constantly get up. For, and when I got invited to the Senior Bowl, a lot of people didn't know. They, they said in the Senior Bowl, when you go to the Senior Bowl, they, they, got, they got physical therapy, you go in there, you know, practice, go in there. I did not show one face there. I used to have my own treatment in my room with my roommate. Um, he was a top player. He was a top two play. He was a top. He was drafted. He was rated higher than me. Mm-hmm. And we played the same position. And he saw my work ethic. So like every time I used to get off three o'clock in the morning while he was sleeping, I used to treat myself. I used to make. I used to get hot. I used to go in the hallway in the hotels and get cold like ice and put it in there every day in the tub. Every day four o'clock in the morning and uh, treat myself every day. And, that's a different type no one, of discipline yeah, and that it was discipline that's because i wanted to bat at anybody else around me even the players that was you know, even players that was better than me or that was rated higher than me i was not gonna let anybody take my dream mm-hmm. and then put a uh, put um put a perception and say this kid is done I, I'm, I'm i'm done when i said i'm done so that's how the mentality that i had and and it, and then all, all of a sudden like i was after the end of the scene ball, i was named the linebacker of the week Mm, so things is so you get this opportunity to really showcase to show that you are still that player you kill it kill it at the senior bowl then you get to the combine how was that so uh, when we got to the combine so now from being a seven from, from being a seven round pick to undrafted now now that now they see the kid oh this kid did good in the senior bowl now he might be fourth and third now i was moving up a chart mm-hmm. so now i proved myself now, now it's all eyes on me now. So now what this kid's gonna do on the combine? So mind you, in the combine, I had, so it was like obstacles. I was going through obstacles. Like literally, I, I fought so hard. Now people don't understand how hard I had to work to get to where I am now. Then I, the combine, then I ran. I ran a four six five, four six five. Then the second time I ran, I could have ran a four five. I pulled my hamstring. Damn. So I pulled my hamstring. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't go again. So I'm sitting down, I'm watching everybody. They're like, damn, you could have ran that. I stopped. And then even running, like I still was running while I pulled my hamstring, I still ran a 469. They were like, yeah, you could have ran a 45. But then I sat down, they iced me, just like, yo, chill out. I seen all the scout. And I didn't care because I wanted it so bad. I had to I had, I told them, I grabbed one person in the corner, like, yo, forget it. I'm like, yo, get, 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 give me a tape. Tape myself up, and I went back out there. And I was catching balls and everything. They're like, yo, they're like, yo, we like your dedication and stuff like that. They're like, yo, we love, we, we love what we see. He's like, yo, but be smart. Take sat down, sat me down, and I, I just want, I always wanted to prove myself, and and they seen that, and um, 
then there's like after the combine I had a, um I couldn't do pro day because I was still healing up from my injury so I had a private I didn't know how many coaches was gonna show up on that um on doing my private pro day and because I missed the regular pro day I had over 10 or uh, 10 11 uh scouts NFL scouts still come and watch me and I and I killed it in my um, pro day and whatever so now everybody now people talk now you hear critics critics saying second and third round so I'm moving up the chart. So, and I always see myself, I was like, yo, I, and I always see myself as, you know, I always seen my ability. I started to understand and feel confident about my ability because I wasn't gonna let anybody label who I was. And and I was, and, and anybody shouldn't have, any, don't, cause don't let anybody should never shoot. I should, I would never tell anybody to ever let anybody criticize you and then and accept because no one knows you better than you. Mm-hmm. No one been in my shoes and, and understand what I've been through to get to where I'm at now. And I was always stay humbled about everything because I was like, because God could always take the things away from you because I've been through it, you know? And God's always testing you. And like right now, God's testing me again. So, so I mean, um, you know, I mean, like after that, then after the combine, just, I did good. And um, there's a story where now the draft day. So draft, draft day, day is coming. So I don't know what round I'm going to be in. Um, so when, before the draft day, I had to visit, I visited 13 teams, right? Before the draft day. So, um, draft day was on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Mm -hmm. So Thursday, I had a draft party. I was going to have a draft party first, uh, Thursday and Friday. Cause I was like, you know what? I'm, you never know if you want, I might get a Yeah. yeah. So what day I always had confidence. I was like, yo, I'm top two round. Uh, People didn't know cause the, and the critics were always saying late second or third or fourth. And most people saying third or fourth. So, I mean, I, I was always believe, I started to believe in myself more. Like, yo, I think I'm a top two round. I'm a top um, two pro, um, player. So, then I had a uh, first, um, so I had a first day of draft. I invited people in my family and friends, and I didn't get drafted the first day. I was just a little discouraged. And I then the second day, I'm Muslim. I told you I'm Muslim. So, most, uh, you know how people go to church on Sundays and stuff like that. So that's our day on Friday. Mm-hmm. So I went to I went to um, I went to the mosque on Friday. After the mosque, I went home and then the draft day the draft party is at eight. I, went, I had it in my aunt house and I got dressed. Before I got dressed, I mind you, I told you I visited thirteen teams. I had thirteen different shirts. The shirt that I picked that was a coat shirt and then wear my my uh, suit and everything, my dachiki and everything. So I wore the coat shirt not knowing I was gonna get drafted by them. So the other, um, then when I went to the party, I mean, when I went to the draft party, I'm watching different draft and whatever. Then 51 pick, one of my boys went to Chicago, 51, second round, 51 pick. Then 52, before the 52, and then coach called me. And then they was like, yo, come on, we're gonna draft you in the um, second round, this next pick and everything. So everybody started yelling. And I remember it had a coach shirt. You got the shirt on already. <laughs> So when they called my name, I took my my I took my shirt off. Everybody was like, yo, so you know the whole time you about to get drafted? I'm like, nah. <laughs> like, yo, and then I from then I knew it was fate. Like it's mm-hmm. fate. God always had a plan. And um then got drafted, had my shirt and everything, and then it was from there. Right. And history still being made right now. So um and I, I want to talk to you. Uh, we're going to keep talking about football. But, man, I think that, uh, again, like your wisdom, your perspective, uh, and the way that uh, – actually, you know what? I would just say overall, you know, it's just like your maturity level. Mm-hmm. What things have you been, like, reading or indulging in in addition to, like, your religion that's, like, helped you kind of, like, really cultivate – the mind like a like right, a warrior right, type you right, know what i'm saying you yeah. really moving with like a lot of poise the thing so. that i do is like i like i listen to like a lot of motivational speakers like mm-hmm. malcolm x uh, muhammad ali and so on like different speakers and i just put motivational speaker and I just try to listen to like different you know different voices and how people you know um speaks and how people portray you know, society and whatever and also like I like to I like to I, I look at Twitter a lot and I like look at the news and whatever and try to make my how can I make Kamoko better 
what can I avoid? Because I learn from other people's mistakes. And that's how you grow. You watch the news and just that. And this is how you avoid little simple, simple little mistakes. So I look that I look at little simple things like that, things to avoid. And I like to look at like uh, go on Google and search up business people like business, like all right, this um, this entrepreneur, what he did to become famous, how he became this, how Steve Jobs did this, and this that third. And he's like with net worth, you feel me? Cause my mentality is like, I want to be a billionaire. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody mentality. Anybody can be a millionaire, right? The people understand. Anybody can be a millionaire. You can use a, you can have a million dollars and build a, and make a, have a bank. It only take a million dollars to get a bank. A lot of people don't know that. You feel me? So my thing is like to be financial, have a financial freedom, is like I gotta, I'm still climbing the ladders, mm-hmm. and where I'm at, I don't feel like I succeed. You feel me? What I have now, anybody can have the money that I have now and then spend it. So I look at different rich like Jay-Z. You feel me? Like how, how Jay-Z, when well, he became a rapper, now he, he turned that, that he look, he turned that platform into a businessman. Exactly. You know, like, and like, and like Rihanna, one of the, one of the richest women, like, like richer than Beyonce, how she did it, singer. Now she's an entrepreneur, makeups and everything, you know? Mm-hmm. So a little thing, I just try to understand everything, just try to understand the business. I'm not saying that I don't know the business aspect. And sometimes, yeah, you got to take risks in life and whatever, but I got to, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to Definitely. constantly, you know, continue to educate myself because I'm trying to create, my future is I'm trying to create jobs for people out there instead of giving handouts. I want right. to create jobs for, like, individuals and for them to have create their own financial needs and whatever and create a path for people to easily you know you know to help other people up and help help other people out and whatever so that's that's my take and whatever i'm why the platform i got now i'm just learning the business how to learn business outside because football ain't gonna last forever mm-hmm. you know so you gotta you gotta teach yourself at this epidemic right now i've been trying to learn how to teach myself i talked to my boy he does foreign exchange i met him in miami and his family is very wealthy and and he told me he started he started doing foreign exchange since he was 18 years old now he's like part of ceo of the new company they're starting right now foreign like and i've been a part of it he's just been teaching me the little things like foreign exchange and everything he's like and i didn't understand foreign exchange before but you know like the banks make money off our savings right you know what i mean and give us a little percentage of the money that they use for us so and I'm just learning a lot, you know, everything like that. Just trying to learn everything, like that business aspect, and also like uh, London too. Like you talking about his business, his app, and everything. Mm-hmm. And I told London I also went to school for um, um, information and technology. Okay, and okay, I, that's crazy. Me too. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got a master's so, in information system, so exactly. Got a so that's, tech. that's always been my goal, like app and video games and everything. Yeah. Um, and I want to like since this epidemic, I've been practicing. I've been learning about that. I've been learning about little stuff like that, and try to create ideas or mm-hmm. whatever. Just little things, just to keep myself busy. Do you find yourself getting like a lot of um? pitches um not only just from like uh family members or anything like that but from anybody like do you find yourself a lot of people trying to kind of come to you with different ideas that they may have really kind of looking for the financial um uh, investment aspect but do they bring you ideas and try to pitch to you or something like that or i mean since i've been in the league i've been having a lot of people come to me like i know jay-z and everything like that like even rappers like i have no lot of rappers and they come to me it's like yo i want you to listen to my my, my album i want you to think well, give me your perspective on this and that and third or like oh can you sh- shout me out whatever and my thing is like me, I always like like my thing is if I could help you out and if you want me to post my boy, his name Prophet, so he does rap music a lot and we became close and um, he like I listen to his music or whatever. So what I do is I listen to it. So I have to bring how can how can I help my boy out? I usually go on live and listen to put his music out there. When you mm. constantly play the same thing over and over, people start to listen. So it's psychology and people start to listen constantly. They're like, Oh, I heard this song before. Now it just grabs people to into listening to it like mm-hmm. oh, you know, let me check this person out you know or i just post it just pull have it i'm just post this stuff out there and whatever things that i could do to help you out and whatever and and just having that idea just gave me idea to like more um business idea you know, just having people come up to me and just like oh this one did it so like uh, how can i change around because in things if you look at instagram 
Snapchat, how are you useful? Because MySpace started coming first, right? Mm -hmm. MySpace came out first. So how did Facebook, then Facebook, uh, Facebook kind of used the idea of how MySpace is utilized, but then kind of make an upgrade and got right, it. Right, right, right. Put their spin on it. Every every app is similar. You feel me? Snapchat. How Snapchat? Snapchat. Snapchat had a filter when you sent people and then it constantly deleted. And then Facebook, you know, and then Instagram yeah, kind of picked a up bit, on that too. So. And that's how a lot of business, everything. So you just understanding the little things and how you know how business, how did how what grasps people attention. Mm -hmm. You know, live. I thought about live a long time when I go before even before even came out. I was like, yo, cause I didn't, I didn't, I, mean, I was just an athlete, just playing football. I didn't really care about it at, at first, but I was like, yo, live should be in Instagram, but not live. They got live. And now it's here. Now nah, YouTube got live. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like, and so, and they picked little nips and to, to improve their apps and whatever. And um and um they so I just listened to different ideas like FaceTime and just like look at every little thing, different apps and like all right. So this is in a TikTok, how TikTok became successful. You know what I mean? Like they, what uh, what makes people into it? So you just in this world you gotta figure out what people like Uber. Why mm -hmm. why Uber is successful? Because it gives individual people, it gives give everybody individual jobs. They can use their own car to pick people up in there when they want to and get paid. So mm -hmm. it helps the app and the people. Right. You know I mean? Right, right, right. Lyft did the same thing with uh, Uber. I don't know who came up for Uber or Lyft. Uber kind of came first, first and then and Lyft. Lyft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but it's similar. just, an, it was enough space for everybody to eat. Exactly. And, um, you know, that's one of the biggest things, like a business so that's and entrepreneur. Me as an athlete, I just try to think business wise. And I also thought about real estate too, like, you know, real estate too, like, you know, only like houses in different places and whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and even going back to like, Going back to my hood, like going back to my hood, like North North New Jersey, and try to be that guy. Like, okay, you have different business coming, and out the way I was raised, and and then buying business, and we're paying rent and paying, making them wealthier. Why I can't do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm in that situation right now. Why can't I go there? Like, I'm just, and I'm thinking different ideas. Like, oh, but right now I'm just trying to learn and and just try to educate, and feel confident enough, and do all that, and bring people together. You know, what I'm saying that's mm -hmm. my goal. My goal is to, like bring different athletes, like. Like that was raised in my neighborhood. Like now nah, we could be the investors, right? In that investor group. You know? Nah, that's now nah, that's hard. Uh, and that's a lot of times what uh, our hoods, our neighborhoods, really be needing. Like this be needing to see people come back, people that have went out, put their mind to something and accomplish um, their goals. But I know you still on that path right now. You are still building that legacy, mm -hmm. and um, I know more opportunities are continue to present themselves. But just to kind of loop it back around to our football journey so now you're in the league mm -hmm. now um you know more business opportunities are presenting themselves you plan on a much bigger scale or a much bigger stage mm -hmm. moving up to this level what's now like the big transition that you have to make if there is one just kind of flipping that switch between college to pro uh the biggest transition is um you're accountable for every little action you take and that you do. But I say what I mean by it. in college, you any any mistakes you do is okay, is like it's not really hold against you because it's like okay you you're young or whatever you can't take your scholarship away whatever unless you do something crazy you know that right. okay they have to pull your scholarship but you're usually coming back exactly one way or another. exactly so you know. yeah you, you're allowed to make mistakes in college but now you're in a pro level now it's a p pro now that you're a grown man you're playing against different grown men so you got to conduct yourself in a different way now now also you uh you're a, uh, a public figure you feel me? whatever decision that you make mm -hmm. affects everybody around you you got kids that watching you, that look up to you. You feel me? You got people kids that watching you like, yo, whatever I do, it affects everybody else. It affects my family, it affects other people's kids. So now that's, that's and that's a different thing. Like, yo, now, now there's no excuse because I'm, I'm here where I'm at. I feel, oh, I could do whatever I want. Nah, you just got to be more conservative and mm -hmm. more aware of what you do. So... I mean, again, like I, I think a lot of people get into the league 
Um, maybe they don't have all of those different type of experiences when they got in college, but a lot of people are getting to the league and trying to learn these lessons about really, you know, bumping their head and by experience. But um, again, just kind of your ability to learn from other people's mistakes and kind of taking information from different right. perspectives allowed you to kind of navigate and really just focus in on the game because when you arrived your rookie season, you was good to go. It was all systems go. Like, as soon as you uh, got on the field, you got a couple sacks, like, your first yeah. rookie year. I mean, did you expect to be playing, like, major minutes and different things like that your rookie year? Or what did you have in mind when you first got to the Indianapolis Colts? <laughs> uh, damn, I wanted to be that guy. Uh, that's 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 been the number one thing like, I just wanted to be that defense end that they they could rely on because I was very excited that they took a chance on me um man just and and also like when I, I never told you that like, like I told you before the uh, interview started that before I got even picked up you know I met my family you know she, right right um, her name Fender so she, like she reached out to me when she didn't have to so I was coming into a world like I was coming because mind you, I never had I never had an apartment by myself. I always lived in a dorm, um, so everything was new. Just just being drafted, and I had to think about okay, I gotta get my own apartment. I didn't know how everything worked. So being a kid that was handing out like wealth right there in a flashing eye, be like okay, what the hell am I gonna do? I don't know how to do. It. I never had a, a apartment before. Now you start to overthink stuff. So she was there and then she was a big part of my life. Like she's always supported me and she was always there for me, her and her husband, Dustin. So it was always there for me. So it's like, I felt like I was home already when mm -hmm. I got here. So, mm -hmm. And it's like, I feel like God, mind you, with, with, the, with me having a cold shirt before I even got drafted and by them being here, it's like, yo, it was, it was, it was, it was, like, it was like God placed me a place of right home for me. Like this is what I want you to be. You know, this is this would be right for you. So, I was fortunate. I was fortunate enough to be blessed and given an opportunity to meet a beautiful family. Right, and, family um, already here. And 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 um and being um, placed in a uh, and with coast and coast nation that that their their culture is tremendous. Like I love their culture, and I would never think about any other team but um, the coast because they everything they said the message they sent out there is is a it, it makes you a better man and it, it makes you a better man in the field and it, make, it bring the beast out of you too man so now where we at right now we've almost kind of got to almost present day uh we have like one little snag that happened you know with the injury not too long ago but um we already kind of hit on it a little bit you rehabbing and like your discipline is going to pretty much get you through rehab on schedule on time and so much so that you've already been named as one of the 2020 breakout players like they are expecting you to have a, a huge season come um next year so uh you already back on people's radars it's kind of reminded me of the story where you were just talking about hey i kind of uh fell off a little bit this time it's due to injury but that break off or that period where you get the opportunity right. to get back on people's radars you're doing it right now mm -hmm. i don't know if people just seeing the rehab or seeing the work ethic but um you probably already knew that though yeah, they got right, you uh, right. on that list right. um and then and coats have been busy in the off season too so uh, things been moving around and they had just brought in uh, a, while, a little while ago, not too long ago, they brought in Phillip Rivers, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that that's going to definitely be uh, a, a game changer. So uh, with you, breakout player 2020, Phillip Rivers, I mean, what what we looking at? One Super Bowl, two Super Bowls, three? How many we looking at? What yeah, we doing? To be, to be determined because um, like we had we had talent since last year. I mean, um, and this injury didn't stop me. It was, you know. It's just been it's just been put on pause, and once I come back, it's gonna be replayed because I had that mentality, I had that dog mentality, I had that dog mentality. That I'm coming, nobody stopping me. So that that's my second year. My second year is everything was different. I had that confidence that yo, I got everybody around me. And I, I mean, there's no stopping me. Like that's that's that mentality. But you know, I mean, I've been, you know, I got hurt and whatever. But that mentality never changed, and it's still, I still have it. Um, and you know, the coach went out there. And got Buckner, things that could help us out mm -hmm. in our defense. We got he got Boys. Rivers, 
He got corner. He got Xavier. Uh, he got some Isaiah. Like we got corners. You know, we got we got we got goons coming in this year. So it's gonna be different. And they have the same mentality. You got Darius Leonard. There's a lot of young guys, and the people don't understand is a lot of us young, 23, 24 years old. Right. So we got dogs out here. So last year, unfortunately, we had dogs out there yesterday, last year too. But it was just like you know, because of injuries and that, that kept us down. But this year is gonna be different, you know. You know, we we stand on top of it right now. I mean, since soon as April 20 started, we was we was on we was on the go. We got meetings. We constantly talking and, and planning. We plotting everything. You know, getting game ready, you know, studying and, and just getting, you know, holding each other accountable. Like every time we do drills and they tell everybody, they, they hold every individual people accountable. Like uh, every time we do drills, we got to send them re- um, videos of what we did. And I was wondering about that. Just you know, so, so like communication, everything is pretty much still been like right on point, right on schedule, mm-hmm. even during the COVID stuff, right. player communication and workouts. Yeah. Like y'all still expected to do everything everything yeah we talk we talk on the meetings like um we don't know what other teams doing but we know what we doing we just we just holding each other accountable like we calling each other like yo this is what we doing and we got monitor like the monitors will be doing work and everything so it just getting us better and knowing and just showing our progress and how hard we working as an individual so and we talk about it as a group when we all get together and collab with each other so and it's like it's no we ain't leaving no one behind. We just, yo, if you're on the train, it's time to go. Mm, mm, mm. Man, Kimoko, bro, you didn't, um, you've really like hit on so many different things that just as a as a guest on the yeah. show, we, we're we going to have to put you in a whole different category. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You came in here and talked to us about um, being disciplined, being a professional, performing on the highest level. You know, dealing with uh, hardship. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I felt like I just learned like a ton sitting here talking to you. And you hit on a lot of different things, but I do want to give you this time to, you know, pretty much ask the question. Like, if it was one thing that you could share with uh, the audience, your fans, that you feel like has been important to your success and you feel like it's something that's shareable. Uh, what would that one thing be? One thing, I mean, I get DMs all the time and kids asking me, what should I do? What kind of workout do I do? And how do you get to what you got now? And one thing I would say, like, don't look at a person's success. Like, you gotta look at what, how they got what they at today. So I'll look at, I won't look at Von Miller and what he is successfully. I'll look at on what Von Miller did to get where he is now. Mm. Because we all start from the bottom before we get to the top. You know, you don't start from top to bottom. So I'm just saying like, you gotta work. I mean, you know, um, it's always gotta, you always gotta have that mentality. Like my coach always said, 1%. You always gotta, you always gotta be, every day you'll have in your mind to you trying to be 1% better. Cause you don't never know who out there working harder than you. So I'll, I'll, that's, what, that's, what, that's always been my mentality. Cause I don't know who's out there is working better, working harder than me. So I constantly try to stay on top of it every day, and try to be consistent because it's bigger than me. My dream, like this football thing, is bigger than me because it's not only me; it's every my family, it's the fans, it's everybody that's supporting me, that's that's relying on me. So that's why I tell I tell everybody, like, yo, there's people out there that's relying on you, and you gotta work as hard. Like you gotta work hard every day, bust your butt, even though if you feel like you don't want to do it because your dream is right there. And if you quit now, you, you never get the outcome of what you could have been. Man, that's some wisdom right there. And as always, we really, really appreciate you all for tuning in and checking out this episode. Uh, Kimoko, bro, I appreciate yeah, you. Man, I appreciate you, dude. Man, the wisdom. You got to write a book, brother. You got to write a <laughs> book or something, that. man. <laughs> but no, man, that's Plugged In Podcast. Appreciate you all for rocking with us. We out. But nigga, we coming for welfare. Shoot a bullet when I pull it. How you catch a bullet like a head of failure? Should've known it was litty when bitches don't lie in no my dick.